Hey, what's up guys? So, how is everyone liking PvP since this last DLC came out? I haven't really had the chance to play very much. This is really the second time I've sat down to PvP since the DLC came out. Uh, I still haven't, admittedly, I still haven't even finished the PvE aspect of the game. Uh, but I have started to do some invasions. I started my session out here uh, in Aldia because, fuck man, this is one of my favorite places to invade. Uh, but, oh and shit, that setup parry was really satisfying. I'd really like to talk about that bone fist uh, as well. Uh, but I started my invasion session out here in Aldia, and uh, I did get a few interesting invasions, uh, a couple good fights, and this shit. Ah, uh, man, I hate fighting in the acid pit. It's a huge pain in the ass. Uh, because my inventory is always a fucking mess and it takes me forever to find all my gear whenever I'm re-equipping it all and every time I can never remember can I leave my rings on or can't I oh shit I can't damn it that doesn't make any sense but okay um, anyway yeah I haven't really been playing that much guys I have been playing some other games, and I was sort of debating, hmm, should I upload any of this, or should I just play them? And I elected to just play. Uh, there's a couple games that I'm interested in playing. Uh, one of them is Alien Isolation, uh, but uh, I am still on the fence uh, a little bit. I would like to jump back into some Dark Souls 2. I did have uh, a pretty good time in this session of invasions. And honestly, the last couple times I played, at least the PvE, uh, I really didn't have the best time. So it kind of, you know, with my limited time to play these days and uh, the desire to really just, you know, immerse myself in whatever I'm playing, uh, it really kind of put me off on Dark Souls 2 a little bit. Uh, I wasn't, honestly, just from what I played of uh, the last DLC, and I still haven't finished it, mind you, so I guess there's that. I mean, maybe I should do that <laughs> before I start talking about it, really, uh, but just from what I played, I really, I didn't really think that much of it. I mean, maybe I've sort of uh, had it with PvE in Dark Souls 2. Uh, it really wasn't my cup of tea uh, at all. But the PvP is still a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Uh, I do have problems, uh, personal problems, with a few things. Uh, I still haven't just learned how to deal with it yet, and these are things that I encounter all the time. So it's pretty crazy that I still just am so uncomfortable fighting against them. Uh, but uh, my arch nemesis right now is just pretty much any straight sword. I have a really difficult time dealing with that. Uh, there's going to be a fight coming up in this set of invasions sometime soon where I get completely manhandled by just a guy rocking a straight sword, just rolling around, never runs out of stamina, always has an answer for me, just chips me away, and then once I actually, you know, really go for a big parry uh, towards the end, I just get sliced up and I can't land my setup parries at all. Uh, it's a really tough weapon to set up, Perry. Really tough. I, I don't even know if it's uh, reliable enough to justify ever even trying. Uh, at least I suck at it. Uh, it's one of those weapons that just constantly beats me down. And 
I was actually thinking about this the other day. Uh, I used to have a lot of problems fighting against uh, dual whips, and it's still a really tough fight for me, uh, but I made a character recently that uses daggers and whips, and after I started using dual whips a little bit and fighting against people that were really comfortable uh, fighting against me when I had my dual whips out, I started to learn, oh, okay, so you can pressure it this sort of way, and it makes dual whips a lot more difficult to use. Uh, so I, I found that when uh, I have a problem fighting against a weapon, uh, the best way for me to uh, learn how to fight against it uh, is to actually use the weapon myself and to figure out what the deal is. Excuse me, uh, but yeah, uh, I really think that it's about time that I make a build that uses a straight sword uh, in at least one of the weapon slots. I really like to use multiple weapons uh, on my characters. For this set of invasions, I think I just uh, rocked my Curve Neal Great Sword and the Red Rust Sword, uh, but uh, this guy is built so that he has the stats to use the Bone Scythe uh, as well as the Red Rust, uh, or instead of the Red Rust, uh, actually. And I found that to be my preferred combo, but when I'm fighting against an, an opponent like this guy, for example, um, the Red Rust Sword is really effective uh, because it actually gives you a little bit of needed speed to perhaps land a hit on a guy like this that's just really adept at rolling around and getting the advantage on you. Uh, I did think that uh, this was a good fight. I just got pretty much outplayed here. Uh, that was a strange kind of face stab, uh, but I guess it happens. Other than that, I just got pretty much outplayed. Uh, I went for a couple big parries, at the end, so be looking out for that. Uh, I really thought that one of them was going to be a setup parry, and it ends up not being, and I just get sliced up. Uh, but anyway, man, that was a that was a good fight right there. Uh, I need a lot of practice, uh, a lot more practice fighting against this because, man, I mean, I didn't really do anything to this guy. He just handily kicked my ass, and. I mean, I guess I made him work for it a little bit, but eh, that was pretty, that was, that was a beat down. And I fight against straight swords like that all the time. And shit, man, straight swords are my arch nemesis in the game right now. So uh, it's just, uh, there's just so many things about it, man. It's just a damn good weapon. Uh, I will say that much damn good weapon. I don't think it's OP or anything, but it's it's pretty fucking good. Uh, anyway, a little bit of a rant incoming just in relation to that. Uh, you know, weapons like this, the Curve Neal Greatsword, I do think this weapon has its upsides. For example, right there, boom, right on point. The attacks come out very fast. Right? So I can animation cancel, a guy can go for a parry, and then I can immediately go into a couple R1s, you know, really, really quickly. So for being an ultra great weapon, it's actually has a pretty fast moveset. Now it's easily avoided, nevertheless, but it's pretty fast and it's deceptive sometimes. So if you can catch someone mid-animation, you can really punish them with a follow-up attack or follow-up combo of some kind. So that, to me, is the big upside of the weapon. Uh, but it has so many downsides, man. So many. Uh, the stat investment for this thing is insane for the amount of damage it does and for the amount of weight it takes to wield it. Uh, I mean, shit, man. It's, it's, it's a really cool weapon and all, but damn, it's a very demanding weapon. So, when you can just rock a straight sword that is not very demanding, stats-wise, is, you know, it's a very lightweight weapon, but you can throw a resin on it or something like that, and it's gonna out-damage an ultra-great weapon, you know, that requires so much effort to use, 
effectively, and so much, you know, stat investment, man, that's where I start to get a little salty with weapons like that, because they just don't make sense from a, you know, statistical investment standpoint. So it's like, man, why would I ever want to use this weapon that requires all this shit and doesn't have the performance of something that, <laughs> I mean, requires infinitely less investment and is going to have far greater performance in the long run. So that starts to kind of, uh, that starts to kind of get at me a little bit. But uh, at the same time, straight swords, I'm sure, have their downsides. And I've already considered this. Uh, but I would imagine uh, straight swords would have a lot of difficulty fighting against people that have very high poise. And on this build, uh, originally that was going to be my goal, uh, was I wanted to have high poise and actually be able to out-tank people in trades. Uh, but I kind of strayed from that because my playstyle just is... I don't like to trade with people. Uh, so um, it's just really bad uh, for my playstyle to just have this one build that's uh, going to be designed around winning trades, you know? So I ended up straying from that in that build, and uh, I just didn't like having the poise. And when I did have the poise, I didn't use it because my playstyle is just so different from that nature. But anyway, uh, I think I've ranted on that stuff long enough. Uh, so basically, you know, I'm just having problems dealing with, uh, you know, stun locks which are initiated by really fast weapons, you know, that bone fist, rapiers. Getting stun locked for four or five hits in a row is too much. And, you know, shit, man. These are things that weren't a problem in the previous games because of toggling. Uh, but because we don't have that this time around, you know, being forced to eat five hits of a stun lock is kind of bullshit. So... I'm just not a huge fan of not having toggling in the game for that kind of stuff. We were behind stun locks for a while. Uh, I should point that out. We were behind that shit. Uh, they fixed that. So the game was amazing for that. It's still not a huge problem now. It's not like stun locks have resurfaced to the point uh, at which they were <laughs> because it was fucking ridiculous. But they are coming back a little bit, man, because they keep adding new new stuff to the game. So I think it's time to get another stun locking balance uh, at some point, because just from my experience so far, especially after this last uh, DLC, stun locking is starting to rear its ugly head again. And when it's done by these incredibly fast combos, it. it Avoiding it all the time isn't really an option. Like, you're just going to get clipped by it uh, from time to time, and there's not going to be much you're going to be able to do about it. Uh, but that's just from where I sit on that. And like I said, it's not nearly... Uh, stun locking isn't nearly uh, as vicious as it was. So at least we still have that to hold on to. Uh, but... Uh, oh, yeah, these fights right here. Uh, I should mention that uh, they are old duels that I had on Iron Keep Bridge uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, there's, some <laughs> there's some interesting fights here, uh, but like I just got ganked there a little bit ago. Um, so <laughs> I'll tell you what, man, Iron Keep Bridge is an interesting place to get duels. Uh, they sometimes end up feeling a lot more like random invasions than... Uh, my normal random invasions do. So, anyway, guys, uh, I think I've spoken enough. This stuff at the end is sort of a bonus fight session, so uh, I'm going to get out of here, and I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I hope you enjoy the rest of the fights with these tunes, and I will see you on the next one. <laughs>
Thank you.